So, um, Olivier Courtin, I'm working in GIS field since years, and I founded the um, um, data ping company. Um, and um, one of our main focus is to um, build bridge uh, between uh, uh, GIS fields and uh, deep learning stuff. So how are we able to extract insights from geospatial data through the latest uh, available tool that we have? We already knew um, how to do it with spatial analysis in a classical way, but what can we extend with new tools to go further. That's it. And so the, this presentation is about a computer vision tool able to extract information from imagery. That's it. That was my one minute presentation. Uh, so the, um, um, the framework is called net.io.pink. And uh, if we uh, go back to, um, to the history, everything begins with a loop. So it's um, a vinyl loop uh, one century ago. Uh, and the, the point is to say that you have to understand what is wrong before to be able to fix it. And you loop again and again. But since you are not able to understand what is wrong, there's nothing to do about. So if we look about the association nowadays, uh, it's well, widely used. There is a, a vast amount of information available, but we are unable to use it really. And most of the pixels acquired, we don't do anything with them. It's a waste. So the idea, the need, is to say, OK, we are able to gather pixels, but what can we do with this pixel to, um, to be able to switch from pixel to insights? That's the key point. If we look about the deep learning stuff, Supervised learning is quite simple. You have one input, one expected output, and you train a neural network till it's able to compute the output from the input. And the key point is the loss function. The loss function is the ability to compute the distance between what he performed and what it expected. And since you are able to compute a meaningful distance function, you are then able to find a way to converge to a solution, okay? So as since you train a model rightly, you're able only with the input to use your trained model to compute an output. That's it, okay? So it's only a way to train a model. So what is really a trained model? There are several ways to understand it. We'll focus only on one because it's the simplest one to understand. It's a compression. You only compress your information, the whole imagery information, and you accept to lose a lot of information, but you keep all the information you need to achieve your task. So it's just a directed um, compression stuff to lose the information, but the one you have to, to keep for the classification. So once you understand it, uh, netio.pink is just a way to build a bridge between geospatial data and deep learning stuff. Um, there is a three um, um, tasks we are focused on. First is quality analysis. So once you train your data and you are able to uh, compute an output, you will be able also to compare this output to an internet data set and so to put in evidence if there is a significant difference, yes or no. And for instance here, in pink, it's what is predicted by the model. Oh. What? Yep. Uh, in pink, it's what pre is predicted by the model. In uh, green, it's the labels. And in the gray, is when both are agree. So it's a quick way to um, be able to, um, uh, to check if the model and the label are um, matching, yes or no and to see that this one, for instance, it's because it's behind the, the trees. So it's harder for the model to, um, um, to, um, uh, to find a building because it's hidden. Uh, and it's also um, uh, interesting to see that if you zoom out, there is uh, um, Spotify differences uh, which will help you to save time because we will focus only on the part where there is enough differences between your two data sets. Um, 
One other thing you can perform with exactly the same um, uh, framework is uh, change detection, because in this um, um, uh, in this um, uh, scenario you will train a model and use an alternate input. For example, uh, for example, something like one years later or two years later or one week later, any time, uh, and uh, you will so compute an alternate output and compare the difference. Okay. And the last one is feature extraction. You will train your model with a small data set train area, and you will use a wider <coughs> imagery input to compute output. For instance, you will only label a small area, and once your model is trained, you will be able to launch the prediction on a wide area and thereafter to vectorize it. So to be able to um, um, use the three scenario, um, we have um, several um, little tools you can uh, um, um, assemble with um, kind of Lego um, stuff. So there are small tools and you can change them uh, to create your own um, uh, workflow. So it's a command line interfaces. Um, and the wool ID is the ability to deal with uh, different kind of imagery, different kind of well-known uh, labels format to compute the prediction and thereafter to do something meaningful with uh, um, as insights from uh, the prediction mask you, you generated. Okay, so that's the key concept. Um, about the stacks, um, we reuse um, so some well-known um, um, computer um, software uh, from a GIS field, some uh, we came uh, from um, a Python imagery, as, and some we came from um, a deep learning uh, world. So uh, it's uh, a bridge between these um, uh, these uh, worlds. Um, it's full open um, open source except the NVIDIA parts, um, because it's not open source by NVIDIA itself. Uh, it's easy to deploy. It's not because we use a lot of software that we didn't package. So it's just a single line to install the whole stuff. Um, there is a, a one-on-one tutorial who help you to uh, do it by yourself. And so to learn by yourself by doing it uh, with real world data uh, and something uh, from the install to uh, the tra data preparation, training and so on. Um, Take something like two, three, three hours uh, to um, to launch the wool um, the wool training session um, and the wool um, um, results. So it's also available online. So if you want to look at it right now, you just have to to click on it and you click on the different picture to zoom in the leaflet um, interfaces. Uh, so all you need, in fact, is imagery, and uh, we've seen that it's not a problem anymore. GPU, and uh, you need at least um, a recent GPU with um, uh, enough um, memory, and labels. And so the key point is uh, the label, because most of the time we, are, we have labels, but not accurate enough. So if you look here on the OSM uh, buildings, uh, um, data, we have building from this imagery. It's true. But um, they are not accurate enough to be sure that your trained model, if you use this kind of data, uh, will be uh, really accurate. So it's something um, uh, important to keep in mind that if you are garbage in label, you will have a garbage out prediction. Yeah. So um, the point here is also to reuse this technique to check that uh, your dataset training is uh, um, quality enough. And so to compare your labels you use here with these really tools. And so also be able to keep or not some labels because, for instance, here um, these buildings appear in the label, but uh, is not um, it's not right related to this imagery, because uh, it's um, right now on this imagery, uh, is there is no buildings at this time. So uh, the most common way is to remove these ones, and uh, there is an integrated uh, um, tool to help you to uh, keep yes or no uh, in a second. 
So what's new uh, inside the NTO uh, that pink? First is uh, the ability to um, enhance uh, the quality of the prediction uh, despite the fact that we use tiles. So it's well known, uh, we use meta tiles uh, to enlarge uh, the focus. Um, obviously, it will take longer if we choose this option, but the result here is cleaner, okay? So uh, if we slow the whole process, we have to um, improve it some other way. So we, um, uh, we add the multi-GPU um, uh, scaling uh, to help to, uh, to, to use as many GPU you can um, get on a single host and for the trend of prediction. So you can scale it up. And also we add the multi-classes. So um, you are not only uh, obliged to use it on a single class, you can use it on several class uh, at once. And we um, also provide an auto-weighted unbalanced um, uh, option to help you to, um, uh, to give uh, um, weights uh, related to the classes um, if they are not um, distributed in the same way uh, in uh, your data set. Um, so what's the limit right now? First, um, the kind of imagery you want to predict on must be quite um, related to the ones you already train on. Remember, it's a kind of compression. So you can't expect a good result if the kind of imagery has nothing related to the ones you use for the training. Um, about the labels, we've seen that you need something accurate. And the amount of label you need is something like um, thousands. So at the very least 1,000 or a few thousands, it depends, but not uh, a dozen, okay? And also, uh, right now, it don't deal with topology. So if you have something you want to extract and it's topology uh, related, something like a network, so roads, for instance, uh, it doesn't work well. It's far better behave with surfaces, any kind of surfaces. Um, right now, we are still working hard on it, and we are looking for funding for sponsor in any way. It could be uh, related to a code, so pull requests are really welcome. It could be related to money funding. It could be related to hardware funding, and so on. So help us to increase again accuracy, especially on low resolution. We talked just before about um, Copernicus and Sentinel. The next step, obviously, will be to um, behave and to increase the resolution even before we, um, um, we perform training and, uh, and prediction on it. Um, the topology, obviously, and to reduce the amount of labels we need before to be able to have an, um, an accurate training. And also go on on the performance uh, improvement because it's not necessary anymore to have a, a huge infrastructure to be able to use it. You can but it's not mandatory. Um, there is also alternative open source um, to this project. There is Raster Vision, Learn, Robosat, Solaris. So why choosing this one? Few arguments. Um, we are really focus on G-standard compliance. So it's really easy uh, and standard compliant to reuse um, uh, all the geospatial format data you, you work um, daily with. Uh, your data preparation will be easy and fast. Um, there is a built-in um, web UE interface which helps you to check at every step that everything is online, yes or no. It's modular and extensible, so it's not something um, uh, you, you can't uh, extend uh, easily. On the contrary, you can uh, really easily add new tools, add new interfaces, add new templates, and so on. Um, it's um, um, also under multi-bands um, imagery, uh, and uh, also on um, the data fusion. So you can, for instance, use vector, rasterize your vector, and add it, add an input from your imagery. So it's really the same kind that a GIS a map. You compose your map by adding several layers, and with this stack, you can train and then compute. It's high performances, and it's accurate because we use and reuse the latest uh, computer vision papers available. 
Um, if um, this field interests you, uh, there is in one slide all the best uh, resources to, to learn from it. Um, and uh, yeah, one slide about the company. To take away, um, there is right now industrial open source IE4 Euro framework available. Um, the performance has, are already okay to use it uh, at a country level. Um, you not need anymore to be a computer vision scientist to use it. A geospatial guy who understands the idea of the compression can do it right now. Um, plain open data could be used to train a model because you can use it step by step and so to refine your labels till they are accurate enough. And funding and pull requests are really welcome. That's it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> for once, we have more than one minute time for questions. So bring it on. Yes, please. How does this compare to the um, It was uh, um, um, it's just a rename. Could you, okay. could yeah. you repeat the question yeah. uh, a bit louder, please? There's another framework called Robosat Pink, yeah. is it similar? Yeah, Robosat Pink was um, the name of the previous version. Okay. And um, Nitio.pink is a rename, is a 0 .0 0.7 version of the 0 0.6 Robosat Big version. The, the point is, uh, there is a Robosat project and Robosat Pink. And people, a lot of people made the mistake. And when I told Robosat Pink, a lot of people understand the Robosat. And so at the end, it was a mess. So I said, OK, we uh, stop it. We rename it. So it's Nitio. There is no Nitio anywhere. So it's a new name and go on. So it's a zero set version. Yep. Just, uh, um, do you have uh, statistical output about how well the model performs? Like, does it give you any statistics on any training? Beyond, uh, related to these ones? Um, no. Right now, no one uh, at my, uh, I, don't, I don't have any information that anyone uh, compare uh, this wool framework. It will be a really good idea uh, on uh, several aspects related to accuracy, related to performances, and related to uh, how easy it is to use them. Yep, it's a need, in fact. But at, at my, um, I don't know anyone who, would, who did it before. Yep. Uh, the example of the computer vision Yep. Use Python. So yep. I suppose it is like a unit. So it's mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it's a unit like with a, an encoder, and a re you reuse a, an encoder as a ResNet like. So you can choose any kind of ResNet okay. as an encoder. It's a unit like, and uh, there is also a copy from uh, the encoder to the decoder as a unit, but also on the decoder so part. Because uh, yeah, you also you already have all the PyTorch and augmentation. Augmentation is data augmentation. Uh, yeah, data augmentation um, and uh, data augmentation able to deal with uh, multi-channel, mm -hmm. and data augmentation able to deal with uh, several kind of imagery um, color shifting. Right. So you can add a lot of noise in your model, and because you add a lot of noise, uh, the model um, is forced to generalize enough to be able to still work even if the imagery of the input will slightly change. It's a big augmentation. Yep. OK. Anybody? No? Then once again, thank you very much. Thanks.